Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome back to another weekly meal prep. I wanted to let you know that this video is sponsored by Mizen, which I will be sharing with you about that later on in the video. So first of all, I am whipping up a batch of bread and I'm not actually going to show you the bread recipe because I've done that in a previous video a few weeks ago, which I can link below, but I wanted to show you how I've been buying my yeast in bulk in these large packets and I wanted to show you how you store it for long-term storage so you just dump it into a airtight jar like this and I like using a mason jar because I can use my brake bleeder which I showed you on my maple syrup last week to kind of seal the lid and you could put it on the shelf but the best way to store this is in your freezer it just keeps the longest and then you can pull it out and use it for your different recipes and then pop it right back into the freezer so I'm just whipping up this bread and it's so simple I know that there's a lot of you that have been trying this recipe out since I shared it last and have been loving it and I love making it and I pretty much just make it as we run out so we were in need of it and I wanted to let it rise on the counter while I was prepping everything else for this week So Monday we are doing sour cream chicken enchiladas. It is a freezer meal and I will do my best to link the freezer meal videos associated with each meal I'm doing this week below in the description box. But along with those sour cream chicken enchiladas, I'm also doing a Mexican coleslaw. I have never made this recipe before, but oh my goodness, it was so delicious. And I'm also using some of my homemade sour cream. I'm still working on coming up with a tried and true recipe for this to share with you all. This batch turned out a little bit on the runny side and I just wanna get it to the point where it can be nice and thick. And I've been making my dairy products with powdered milks and creams because it's something that I keep in my long-term food storage. So it's just a way to cycle it out by making my dairy products from those things, which I'll share with you a little bit more about that later on in this video. So this recipe was super simple to put together and you could really tweak it around to make it the way that you like it. I used a taco seasoning pack because that's what the recipe called for, but it reminded me that I really wanna get a taco seasoning made up and just put into a jar in my pantries for me to be able to just pull from instead of getting the packets or kind of doing it on the fly. I also love this jar strainer. It works great for cans and regular mouth jars and it just works good for beans and being able to rinse them and drain them. So I'm cutting up some tomatoes and then the other thing I'm going to be making along with the enchiladas and this coleslaw is some good Mexican rice. And honestly, I have struggled with making great rice probably my whole life and I find finally feel like I'm landing on some good recipes. This one was absolutely excellent. In fact, my daughters loved it so much this week that they asked for more. So I'm definitely going to be making it again. I'm making up some blackened corn to go into the coleslaw and it's really simple. You can just put frozen corn into the pan and you don't want to add any oil or anything else to the pan so that those kernels will get nice and toasted. On the other side, you can see that I'm making up the rice and it was really, really simple. The recipe did call for some chicken stock. I didn't have any on hand and I'm getting ready to can some for my canning shelves. So I just went ahead and used water and we still loved it a lot. You can blacken the corn to as dark as you like or as light as you like. That's what I love about making your own things. Like I said earlier, this video is sponsored by Mizen and they sent me this amazing chef's knife. And let me tell you, as I've been testing this knife out over the last couple of weeks, I have enjoyed cooking so much more. It just easily glides through the foods that I'm chopping up. And to be honest, I have never had a knife of this quality, so it's been so nice to have something that doesn't make cutting food up a struggle. 
It's been the knife that I've been constantly reaching for, especially through hours and hours of creating home canned goods. I'll be sharing more about this knife later in the video, but I wanted to let you know that you can check out the link in the description box to get a discount code. Okay, so for Tuesday, I didn't need to do any prep. I had all of that in the freezer and ready to go. We were doing drumsticks, potato wedges, and green beans. Wednesday, it's baked spaghetti, which is a freezer meal, garlic bread with the homemade bread I'm making, and some Italian roasted asparagus. This looks so delicious. This is my favorite way to prepare asparagus. You just cut off the ends, and of course, my, my Zen knife came in handy for that. And you wanna spread them out on the cookie sheet or a shallow roasting pan. And then I lined mine with some parchment paper. I am going to, I think, invest in some silicone mats. They just seem a lot more handy and a lot more sustainable than using parchment paper, even though I I do tend to use that a lot. And then I just drizzled it with some olive oil. I cut up some garlic and then pressed it. And I used a little brush to kind of brush the garlic over a little more evenly. I added some salt some Italian seasoning, and then the star of the show, a nice big block of Parmesan cheese with a peeler, and then you just slide down the cheese and it will give you these nice big chunks of Parmesan. At this point, my bread had done its second rise and was ready to be thrown into the pans. So I just went ahead and did that and then covered them up so they were ready to get in the oven as soon as possible. Then to reheat the asparagus, I will just be throwing it into my air fryer on the day that we eat it. Thursday, I'm going to have my home canned chili. We recently canned chili with my family, so that's so nice to have that on the shelf. And then I also wanted to make up some honey cornbread to go along with it. And oh my goodness, this recipe turned out amazing. First of all, I used some powdered buttermilk. This is the first time I had ever done this and it worked so great. I can't wait to try out buttermilk cookies with this buttermilk to see if it really holds up to that. And actually Walmart carries that powdered buttered milk, so you can check that out there. I popped my stick of butter into the oven as it was preheating just to get it nice and softened up. And then you wanna mix up your dry ingredients in one bowl and then all of your wet ingredients in the other bowl. I recently made and canned some apple butter because I got a super great deal on some seconds apples from a local farmer, which you'll be seeing later in this video also. And the apple butter is so delicious smeared on top of this cornbread. Friday we are going to be doing some lemon pepper chicken that I have in the freezer, some roasted carrots and stuffed mushrooms. So I wanted to prep the carrots and the mushrooms ahead of time. I went ahead and peeled these up and big huge carrots like this are so yummy. I feel like they have so much more flavor than a lot of baby carrots and this is one of my favorite ways to eat carrots 
is to have them roasted. And of course I do my little trick of putting them in a bag to get the oil covered all over them. And I am using my mise en chef's knife to cut up the carrots. This knife is made from premium AUS 10 steel and two times the carbon content of other premium knives to keep the knife strong and sharp over time. The unique slope bolster encourages a proper pinch grip for the ultimate comfort and control. Bolster's placement creates better access to the full length of the blade, and it has a 15 degree angle for a noticeable sharper cutting face. It's handcrafted down to the smallest detail. It took them four years and 37 different prototypes until they knew they had found the perfect knife. And I can definitely back that up. It's just such an easy knife to use. So go ahead and check out the link in the description box to find out more about how you can pick up this knife. Once I drizzled the carrots with some olive oil and really mixed the bag around, I put it out on the sheet that I actually use for the asparagus just to save a little bit of parchment paper and I put the onions all over the carrots. Oh, this is so yummy. You can just do salt and pepper and you're good, or you can add garlic powder. You can really do anything you want to. Next, I'm moving on to the stuffed mushrooms, and I'm doing a very simple stuffed mushroom this week. I'm just doing some cream cheese. I use this buttery steakhouse seasoning that makes anything good. Oh, it's one of my favorites, especially on vegetables. And I just blended it all together with my little hand mixer just till it was like creamy and smooth enough to put into the mushrooms. And at this point, I definitely needed a coffee to get me through the rest of the day. So I just popped out the stems from the mushrooms. And I like to make stuffed mushrooms in pie plates. I feel like it's just perfect with them all being round and they fit in so well. You can kind of pack them together so that they hold each other up. So then I went ahead and filled all of the mushrooms um, on the inside and you can go crazy with the flavor options inside of stuffed mushrooms. But then I just topped it with some of the Parmesan I had left over from the asparagus. And I won't be baking this until the day that we're eating it. So I just covered it with some press and seal and popped it in the refrigerator. And you'll see that everyone in our house loves these carrots because I had some little people wanting to eat them as snacks. At this point, my bread was ready to come out of the oven and I just put it on this little cooling rack and then I brushed the top with some butter. And I did share this whenever I shared this bread recipe a few weeks ago, but if you're out of butter, you can always soak a paper towel and throw that on top and it will also make the crust nice and soft. Either way, this is still our favorite bread recipe and I definitely want to learn how to make sourdough. So that's next on my list. Okay, so Saturday we're gonna be doing homemade freezer pizzas, Caesar salad with homemade croutons. So I'm going ahead and whipping up some easy pizza crust dough. I'm kind of new to making homemade pizza, so any tips you have for me, especially on rolling out the crust, I would love to hear in the comments, but I just did this really simple pizza dough recipe. I'll leave it in the description box. It is from an old cookbook and it just was super simple. So it just has some oil, some yeast, and water, and I did put a little bit of garlic powder in it. I'm not sure if there was anything else I'm missing, but then I just dumped it out on the table and kind of tried to knead it together, adding a little bit of flour as I went. And then I got my pizza pans out. I love these, I just got them from Amazon, but they have the ventilation holes in the bottom, so it gives you that nice crispy crust. And then I did sprinkle the bottom of it with some cornmeal. I love that on the bottom of my pizza crust. Then I tried to make the crust without the rolling pin, but it ultimately I ended up pulling it out because it just seemed so much easier with the rolling pin.
All right, so the little trick to making these freezer pizzas is I only baked them for about five minutes. So kind of pre-baking them. And then I put some red sauce on them that is nice and chunky. This is one of our favorite brands. It's from Aldi and it's a great price, but on top of it, I actually found it at a discount store for $1.50 a jar, which I thought was a really great price for nice thick marinara. So I got a whole bunch of it and it's been kind of being used as pasta sauce and pizza sauce and everything. And so I did one cheese pizza and then the other one I got some of my home canned ground sausage. Now this is cooked sausage, it's not raw. So that's definitely what you want for on top of pizza. So I put that all over the other pizza and I got some of this shredded mozzarella cheese in this huge bag at a discount store near me and I actually think I'm going to freeze some of it and put it in the freezer like using my vacuum packer. I also got some shredded cheddar cheese to do that with as well so maybe I'll share that in a video. Um, but I added a little bit of those mushroom stems from the stuffed mushrooms. Now let me know in the comments what do you think? Do the pepperonis go under the cheese or do the pepperonis go on top of the cheese? I need to know. I've done it both ways. I think I grew up with my mom putting the cheese on top of the pepperonis. I don't know. Let me know what you think though. And then I use the press and seal to just kind of wrap them up on the pans and I'm going to throw them into the freezer like this. Now, I don't think I would do this if I was going to leave them in the freezer a long time, but since it's only going to be a couple of days, I just decided to do it that way. Next, I went ahead and started into making my homemade croutons. Now, this was a loaf of bread that was from my last batch and it wasn't moldy or anything, but it was just really dry and stale. So I thought, hey, what a perfect thing to use to make homemade croutons. So all you need to do is drizzle it with some olive oil and then you can add your seasonings after you spread it out on a cookie sheet. I just did some garlic, some pink Himalayan salt, and a little bit of Italian seasoning and they turned out amazing. These were so good. My daughters wanted to just snack on them. That's how yummy they ended up. And as far as how crunchy they are, that is completely up to you. I put them in the oven at 375 Fahrenheit and I'm not sure how long they were in there. I think I did like 10 minutes and then checked them and we don't like ours super hard. So I just went ahead and did them kind of a more medium crunchiness. Okay, so I know I mentioned the dry milk earlier in this video and I have been successfully making amazing yogurt with dried non-fat milk. And I've been able to find it very inexpensive where I live, so I figured why not? My daughters can't tell the difference. I personally can't tell the difference in whether I use fresh milk or dried milk. Also, while I was doing this, I was gonna show you how to do this in an Instapot or a pressure cooker, and my pressure cooker broke this morning. We had the electricity flicker and I think it fried the heating element in this. So I'm gonna show you how to make it not in a pressure cooker because I realized after a while how it wasn't heating up and so I had to transfer everything to my Dutch oven, which is perfectly fine because more people probably don't have these than people do have them. So we'll show you how to do it very simply without it. So I just transferred all of the milk over to my pot and you need to have something that will tell you how hot your milk is as it's heating up because that's very important whenever it comes to making yogurt. I think you want it around 180 to 190 degrees and then you're gonna pull it off of the heat. Now you don't have to do this next step. You can let it cool down by itself on the counter, but I just like to speed up the process a little bit by setting the pot of milk into a sink of ice water and helping it to cool down. And I'm going to write it in the description box, but I think you need to have it cooled down to 110 degrees before you pull it out. Now, you're going to need either some yogurt from your last batch or some from the store, and it needs to have actual active cultures in it. I just showed you on the ingredients in that one that it has active cultures in it. So you wanna take about 
I don't know, maybe a half cup of the yogurt. I take a little bit of the milk out of the pot just to kind of get it around the same temperature and mix the yogurt in. And then you just wanna dump it in with the rest of your milk. Now, this may seem really funny, but it's just the way that people have made yogurt for a long time, especially without any fancy equipment like an Instapot or a pressure cooker. You just wanna take your pot and wrap it in a bath towel. That's, I know, it sounds weird, but you wanna incubate your yogurt like this. So you'll wrap it in a bath towel, then put it in your oven while your oven is off. I repeat, your oven needs to be off just with the light on so that it stays a nice and warm in there, but not too warm. And after about six to 12 hours, yes, the longer you leave it, it may get thicker for you. It looks like this and oh, it just makes perfect yogurt and I can make it anytime. I don't have to run to the store for milk. Also, if you wanna freeze your yogurt starter, it will keep in the freezer for three months. So even if you don't have a little bit of yogurt from your last batch, you can keep some in the freezer. Okay, now we're switching to some long-term food storage inspiration. So like I mentioned earlier, I got some apples from a local farmer who said they were apples from last year. They were kind of on their last leg and he gave them to me at a great discounted price. So of course I said, I can make those into applesauce and actually this variety of apples is a sauce apple. These are called summer Rambo apples. And so all I did was wash them off really good. And I do have a Victorian strainer, which I'll show you here in a minute. So all I had to do was put them into some big pots, skins and all. You don't even have to core them. I do try to cut some of the seeds out because I feel like that can clog up my strainer. And then you just want to put a little water in the bottom of the pot and have them completely cook steam. You don't have to fill the whole the pot the whole way with water, just enough in the bottom that they don't scorch to the bottom of the pan. And within a short amount of time on your stove on medium heat, they will cook up. This is my Victorian strainer setup. I will leave a link for it below. This also makes tomato sauce, so it's a great investment. It has There is other things you can make with it as well, but I mainly will be using it for applesauce and tomato sauce, and I did this as a kid. I cranked that thing when my mom had one and made a lot of applesauce. And it's really great because it takes out all of the seeds. That's what you'll see coming out of the funnel. On the other end is the skins and the seeds and all of the stuff you don't want in your applesauce. It does all the hard part for you and it just makes making applesauce so incredibly simple. Depending on what variety of apples you're using, you may want to add sugar to it. This variety is pretty sweet. Just kind of taste it and decide if you want to add sugar. This is also a point you can add other fruits so you can make different flavored applesauces or you could even add cinnamon to it, anything like that, just make it your own. And I got rolling with this and completely forgot to film the canning portion of this, but if you go back and you watch how I canned carrots a few weeks ago, it's pretty much a very similar uh, process and I can leave the instructions below, but you will want to water bath can these core in quarts, this is for quarts, for 20 minutes. And you will have canned applesauce on your shelf that will last you at least 18 months. And I'm making a ton of applesauce this year because my daughters love it. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this video inspired you. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Don't forget to leave me a comment. That always helps me out. Give this video a like and I'll see you guys in next week's video.